Today on Lilalicious, we're making butternut squash carrot soup. This delicious, warming, comfort food meal is perfect for ringing in cooler fall weather. I'm going to walk you through two different ways of preparing this recipe. The first way is with oven roasted vegetables. Roasting the butternut squash and carrots brings out extra dimensions of flavor, there's this caramel undertone, and the entire soup will have even more depth to it. The second way of preparing the soup is in the pressure cooker. The benefit of preparing it this way is, first of all, it's faster and more convenient because we can prepare everything all in one pot. First up, let's talk about the main ingredient, butternut squash. It is a harder vegetable with a thicker peel, so it can be a bit more intimidating to prep, but let me show you the best way I have found. With a big sharp knife, I cut off the ends first, and then I use my regular veggie peeler to remove all of the skin. Because butternut squash peel can be thicker, I sometimes go over it twice to really remove all the layers of peel. Now I'll cut the peeled squash in half, and I like to use a melon baller, but you can also use an ice cream scoop or a tablespoon to remove the soft seed part. This particular squash was still quite young, so we don't actually see many big seeds here. Now continue slicing the squash and cut the slices into about one inch dice. You can also bypass the entire peeling and dicing step by using either fresh or frozen butternut squash cubes from a bag. In total, we need about four cups of squash cubes, which is somewhere between one and a quarter and one and a half pounds. Add the squash cubes to a baking sheet and then season generously with salt and pepper and a drizzle of oil. Now toss the butternut squash cubes either with your hands or with a spatula to make sure every single piece is nicely coated and seasoned. To a second baking sheet, add one pound of peeled and chopped up carrot pieces, as well as three garlic cloves and one small onion cut into quarters. Again, season everything with salt and pepper and a little drizzle of oil. And now we're going to roast both baking sheets at the same time in an oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes until the veggies are nice and soft. To make sure everything is evenly roasted, I like to toss everything with a spatula after about 15 minutes. After roasting the veggies, we're going to add just a bit more seasoning. We need two tablespoons of maple syrup or honey, a teaspoon of paprika powder, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and just a little bit of cayenne, somewhere between an eighth and half a teaspoon if you want to give the soup just a little bit of a heat kick. Then add the lid and use the soup function of your blender for about two to three minutes until everything is completely smooth and heated through. If you're going to use an immersion blender, add all of the prepped ingredients as well as the broth to a large pot and bring them to a boil. Then use the immersion blender to turn everything into this luscious, creamy soup texture. If you're anything like me, cream soups may not actually be all that filling for you. What I do to turn this into a complete meal with protein is to serve the soup together with prepared quinoa. So add about half a cup of cooked quinoa to a bowl and then top it with the cream soup. The quinoa gives the soup extra protein and makes it that much more filling. I also like to top each bowl with a few roasted pumpkin seeds and some chopped cilantro or parsley. Just look at this delicious, creamy texture. And now we're going to make butternut squash soup in the pressure cooker. Start by adding four cups of butternut squash cubes to your pressure cooker bowl. Then add one pound of peeled carrot pieces, as well as one small quartered onion and three peeled garlic cloves. You can add them whole or minced. Now pour four cups of vegetable or chicken broth into the pot. Season with a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of paprika and half a teaspoon of cumin. This is optional, but if you want a little bit of heat, add an eighth to half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Because I like this soup extra filling, I always serve it with cooked quinoa. And we're going to prepare the quinoa at the same time as the soup using the pot and pot method. So add a trivet on top of the vegetables and then add a heat proof glass or stainless steel bowl on top. To the bowl add 3 quarter cups of raw quinoa seeds and 1 cup of water or vegetable broth. Also season with a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now close the lid, turn the pressure valve to ceiling position and set the pot to cook on high pressure for 4 minutes. It will take about 20 minutes for the pot to pressurize before the timer starts to count down. Once the cook time is up, quick release the pressure by turning the pressure valve to venting position. Open the pressure cooker lid and use some tongs or silicone mittens to carefully remove the bowl with the cooked quinoa. 
Use a fork to fluff up the cooked quinoa. It can be quite compressed right after pressure cooking. Also remove the trivet from the pressure cooker and drizzle about half a tablespoon of olive oil over the vegetables. We didn't need any oil for roasting the vegetables, but adding just a little bit brings out the flavor so much more. Now use an immersion blender to blend everything up right in the pressure cooker or transfer the cooked vegetable soup mixture to a blender and turn everything into smooth creamy soup that way. To serve this butternut squash soup, add about half a cup of cooked quinoa to a bowl and top it with a delicious creamy butternut squash and carrot soup. Top with some roasted pumpkin seeds and chopped cilantro. To step it up one more notch, you can also drizzle each bowl with a little bit more extra virgin olive oil or a little bit of whipping or coconut cream. And this is how you make creamy butternut squash carrot soup. Thank you so much for watching and cooking along with me. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it or leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. See you next time.